Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, welcome to another Six Ages Gaming Deck Spotlight, and I am so excited to finally have a Final Fantasy TCG deck for you guys today. So here's a quick overlay. I know you might not be able to see this, we're recording in our new place, but there will be a list, uh, text list of this deck in the description, so please make sure to check that out. But I want to lay it out for you, give you that high level overlook, and man, I just really love this Titus combo deck. And it really is more of a controlly type of game, and I just got to play some games with it tonight, and it is absolutely insane uh, with some of the things that can pull off. So first, I'm going to talk about all the forwards in the deck, and then I'm going to talk about all the summons, and then wrap it up by talking about the backups and why I selected those cards. So let's talk about what makes this deck amazing. So up first, we have Zydane. Uh, this is kind of an auto three of. When I was building this deck, I realized that water didn't have a lot of value uh, forwards to it, but Zidane is just an all around great card. Uh, cannot be targeted by your opponent's spells or abilities, so they have a very hard time to remove it. But what's really great is it cannot be blocked by forwards if cost four or more. And especially in the late game, they're gonna be trying to play their bigger threats like Light Cloud or some of the other popular forwards, and they just won't be able to block Zidane. So it's a great way to chip at damage. And it has certainly won me uh, quite a few games in testing. Moving on to three drops, we play two Geomancer. Uh, this is mostly because it draws a card when it dies, and it's also a 6,000 power, and because we play Maria, a backup that you'll see later, um, it being a three drop, possible 7K helps out a lot with blocking different things, um, like land and a few other guys favorably. One of the cards that I didn't really love uh, when I started building the deck, but now that I finally got to play test, uh, quite a bit. This card is just such a great enabler. Um, you know, the, the secondary nickname to this deck is Charlie's Angels because we play uh, Pain, Riku, and Yuna. And Pain, when she enters the field, she can draw a card. Uh, if you have a Yuna in field, which you play a backup, so she'll almost always draw a card. And then if you do a little bit extra work and you play a Riku first, you can play Pain for free because when she enters the battlefield, uh, you can untap three of your backups, which is just a really strong effect. And again, keeping in mind, we play Maria, which is gives everything plus a thousand power. So she can potentially be a three drop 8K, which is um, absolutely amazing stats. Kind of going on with the same theme that we saw with Zidane, we have Yuffie. Uh, I'm really just playing her because she's another uh, four that can't be blocked by cost four or more. So again, just late game, your opponent just has to draw very specific answers. Uh, to these cards and usually they'll just help chip away at the damage. Now she can be pretty easily killed by things like Brynhildr, so that is kind of a downside, but even if she gets in one or two attacks, that is perfectly fine. Uh, moving into the namesake of the deck for Titus combo, we have the Blitz Ace Titus. Um, and really what this card is great for, uh, he gets plus a thousand power for every other forge you have, and we are playing kind of a combo -y deck, so we do have ways to put quite a few guys into the field. And then we have his second ability, Blitz Ace, which I just absolutely love. Uh, late game, for however many points of damage that you've taken, he gains Brave and you get to attack that many times. So again, you'll see in our uh, dual series for this week that there's several, several turns where I'll be able just to put out two or three guys. He becomes a 10K, uh, possibly even 11 with Maria. Uh, and they just can't block him favorably because you have Minwoo to protect him as well. So. Late game, he gets in six attacks, and generally speaking, he'll win you the game on the spot. And we do play a couple different ways to protect the combo as well. Another just insanely good forward if you play this setup. Now again, I will fully be aware and admit up front that this deck is very weak to um, Shantado control because it requires you to have a certain number of forwards on the field. So if they're playing the heavy earth uh, Shantado control deck, um, you're in a really bad spot because that deck can counter this very, very well. But if they're not, uh, with Riku and when you have Yuna and Pain in field, she effectively becomes a 10k that cannot be targeted by spells or abilities. And again, keeping in mind we're playing Minwoo, she will just lock out your opponent from the game, uh, which is how I won several games, it turns out. <laughs> uh, moving to our uh, higher costed guys, a lot of these are going to be one and two ofs, uh, strictly because of their cost and uh, utility. Uh, Cecil is a one of. I like this as a one of because he's not that impressive himself. If you set up the uh, Minwoo and Maria 
combo, which you'll see later, later he'll become a 9k, which is extremely relevant for combat reasons, uh, but ultimately I'm just not the, it, it's great as a lightning rod to protect your combo for a turn, um, but overall I think he's only should be a one of because he doesn't have um, a great deal of utility outside of, you know, perhaps protecting from one removal spell. Then up next we have a Singleton Cloud of Darkness. Again, you'll see later that we do have a lot of draw effects in the game, so hopefully we'll see this when we need it. Um, when she enters the field, she places uh, all the cards but one from each opponent into the break zone. Uh, so if your opponent is going wide because you set up a combo or you set up a wall and they have to you know, suddenly flood the field and you only have one or two cards out, it's great because you can follow up with Cloud of Darkness and uh, kind of set the board back to square one. And again, keep in mind both players choose, so if you really wanted to, you could always just keep your best. Uh, forward and get rid of Cloud of Darkness. A card that has been surprisingly good in testing, uh, and this is probably because I had this in the Water Ice version, which it didn't do a lot, but because we're playing Riku and Pain in this deck, it's often a 5 or 4 cost, which makes this card um, absolutely, absolutely insane when we, uh, late mid to late game when we have set up. So he's a 9k, which is already a very good spot to be in, and then if you have a Yuna, because uh, we're only using it for the Brave effect. If we have a Yuno, which we'll have in the backup, he gets Brave. So it's a 9k, possibly 10k, that can just keep attacking your opponent, and it's going to chip away at their life while we have, at the same time, a very, very strong blocker. Speaking of one of the best blockers in the game, especially in this deck, uh, Sephiroth is a one-of, um, 8k first strike, which again works on defense as well. Um, and you'll see in one of our live games, he literally won me the game because I was able to play him on turn two. Um, and even if my opponent had an answer, I had an Aerith to protect him, and he allowed me, he bought me enough time to set up the turns I needed against the aggro deck, and then put out a lock on turn, I think it was turn six of the game. So again, make sure to watch our duel series to check out how that uh, game two went. Moving on, we're going to talk about the summons. You play three Moogle. Um, I was playing this card mostly because uh, it's an EX burst effect, so if it's ever on top, we just get to play it for free, which is great for card filtering, card selection. However, overall, I was kind of underwhelmed with this card, but I still think it's the best option uh, for a water summon and for what the deck wants to do. So I will admit that this is the weakest summon card out of this lineup, but I've, I've gone back and forth, and I think that I'm still going to keep it in uh, as a three of. Now, the card I absolutely do love, and it was just, whew, this has been insane for me. Uh, Fairy, it's a two-drop in CX, but it says, choose a forward and activate it, draw a card. Really what this allows us to do is this allows us to be aggressive, attack our opponent's life total, and then, as you'll, again, as you'll see in our dual series video, it allows you to surprise them and be able to kill one of their attackers when they thought that they had a safe attack. So I'll attack with my, you know, 10k Riku that you can't target. On the next turn, I'll uh, play Fairy, I'll activate it, and then I'll just start chumping away at your board uh, if you try to attack me. And again, drawing a card in this game, at any time a card replaces itself, uh, that's very, very strong in this game just for uh, getting a card back. Because anytime you're drawing a card, it's effectively more crystal points for you to use on your turn. So it's, it's almost a pseudo ramp uh, in this game, but again, just having more card filtering and card drawing effects can help your game plan out a ton. The other MVP of the deck is three Leviathan. Again, it's an EX, and just being able to choose a, a forward um, and return to its owner hand is great. Again, this can be your own forwards if you're really in a pinch. Um, if you need to protect your Tidus and you need to get him around a removal spell, you can just bounce your own guy. But again, most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to be bouncing their dudes uh, and get in for those last couple points of damage. Then lastly, a two of Alexander. Um, this card is just kind of a, an auto-include. If they play like a Sephiroth that we just need to answer, if they're playing a, a Garen um, or Garland, sorry, or some other like really big uh, boss monster, we just need to have the tools uh, on hand to be able to address those issues. So I, I can't see this being a three of for how common four drop in, I mean, Light Cloud at, at four is just an absolutely insane card. Um, so this isn't good against every deck, but especially if they're playing like the 6-drop Lightning, 6-drop uh, Golbez can also be relevant. It just depends on what they're, what they're playing to have an answer to and get it off the field. So it's just a very versatile card. And then lastly we have the backups. We have 2-Archer. 
Uh, again, I can't stress enough how important uh, being able to destroy backups are. So this is absolutely a two or three of in every single wind deck that you play. Please keep that in mind. Uh, a Yuna, three Yuna as a two drop. So again, being able to play this on your first turn. Uh, so we have five backups that we can play on our first turn with just discarding one card and it helps us set up the rest of our plays. I think six is the right number um, after having some more time to play test, but I, I only want five because um, I really can't find room to put one more archer in, the, in this deck or I would. Uh, the rest of the numbers, I feel very, very, I feel 100% that this backup uh, line is correct for this deck. Now there were some summons or some forwards that I wasn't sure about, but 100% this backup is, line is the line that you want to be using for this deck if you're playing Waterwind. The enabler himself, uh, Minwu, the forge you control, uh, they must receive lethal damage to break them. Uh, so this pretty much just nullifies all uh, damage-based removal. So if Hilder doesn't work, uh, going to combat and then trying to effort away something doesn't work, it really just makes combat for your opponent extremely difficult and so many things that they have to play around at that point. Um, again, this card has just been absolutely MVP. It, it's just been insane. As m every time I play this card and get to resolve it, my opponent just kind of grunts and, you know, it's not putting them in a good spot. So shout out to Minwoo being absolutely amazing. Looking at more ways to protect the combo, we play three of Aerith. Uh, she's great because when she enters the battlefield, she gets to untap three backups. So she can kind of come in for free, if you want to think about it that way. But what's really amazing is her planet protector ability. So the S symbol means that you have to discard another Aerith. But when you do, you get to activate all your forwards you control, and then they cannot be targeted by spells or abilities until end of turn. So if you play a really early Sephiroth, like you'll see that I did, um, if you have an Aerith in hand to protect it, even from that one removal spell that they have, it's just such a huge tempo swing in your favor. Um, that just make it so, so strong. So if you're playing wind, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone will agree and everyone, there's, there's this, this is just isn't a point of contest. You're playing three of this card uh, for just how insanely strong it is. It's, it's great for at a three drop slot and it's also just great for its special. Another thing that really helps out the deck is having brother. So when we were only playing Titus in the ice water version, it didn't, we kind of drew into the pieces because we stalled out long enough naturally, but what I really like about this card, it can search for any category 10 forward and add it to your hand. So this means I can search up Pain if I'm missing Pain. I can search up Riku if I want to put out the 10k wall. It, there's a lot that this card does for your deck. Now, again, we aren't really running ways to destroy our backups or have ways to free up some slots other than kind of archering away our own guys. So I really only wanted to use two because uh, three would just kind of clunk up you're bored and the other one doesn't do anything, but you at least still want to see one of these uh, in the game. So I think two is a perfect number. And it, again, it just helps streamline your deck so much because tutoring is just very, very good in this game as it is in pretty much any trading card game. Uh, another kind of card that we just need to see is Maria. Now she costs four, which is a little bit more, but all four you control gain plus a thousand power. And if, again, thinking about Minwu and thinking about how strong a thousand power is, she can really help um, kind of lock your opponent out of the game. And there was so many times where I had a 10k field in effect um, thanks to Maria and just kind of locking out my opponent because they couldn't deal enough damage to kill them thanks to Minwu. So Minwu and Maria just create such a strong combo that I think um, Windwater is kind of limited right now outside of this exact deck in my opinion, but this definitely opens up more opportunities down the road where I could see uh, <laughs> M and M, I guess you could call them, uh, making uh, some sweet, sweet decks in the future. And then last but not least, we play a two of five drop Yuna. Um, kind of have a love hate with the card. I, I, I kind of wanted just one to have it, but I put two just so in case I would see it. The EX burst is fine because it has the ability to bounce one of your opponent's uh, forwards to their hand, which can be a nice tempo play. But also when a character is put into the field from field to break zone, you remove it instead. So this just nullifies all uh, from field to bat from battlefield to break zone triggers. Now I'm not sure how relevant that that is going to be, um, but it's also another unit for the deck. So if we play that early six drop uh, Titus, it's really really important that we have both those cards 
um, in the field to get that brave and be able to have the ability to keep pushing through for damage and really set our opponent back. So I hope you guys like this video. Again, it's it's absolutely one of my um, I mean, it's absolutely my pet deck at this point. I, you know, I'm in the process of buying some of the foils, and it definitely plays like a combo control deck. So these two are just a uh, absolute match made in heaven. But let me know what you guys think. Let me drop down in the comments below what kind of decks you want to see next. And again, we'll have a list in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps us get the uh, the views out there and help spread the word about Final Fantasy TCG. And if you really like this video, make sure to share it with your friends.